Hi, my name is Alex and today I'm showing you how you can deploy a policy set with conditional access as code. The first thing you should do is just download the repository, clone it or download it as a zip file on your computer and then you're good to go. Currently um, we have a test environment here that has no conditional access policies or basically just the baseline policies that are deprecated and one test policy here and we are going to deploy the device trust with AAD P1 and AAD P2 policy set to this environment. The first thing we need to do is we need to create an enterprise application that will be used to call the Grave API to create the policies. Now currently the script um, connects with the Grave API but also with the normal Azure AD PowerShell module to create some groups. Um, so as of now you will have to connect um, with the device code flow to graph with the enterprise application we're going to create and then with the normal Azure AD PowerShell module to create a group with your normal user account. We are heading to enterprise, we are actually not heading to enterprise applications, we are going to app registrations and we are gonna going to create a new app registration and we are just going to name it CAS code. Um, we will not have to select anything else here, just leave it on the default, um, single pendant, no additional configuration. We register that one and then first we go to authentication and we're going to add a platform configuration. So we add a platform configuration, we choose mobile and desktop applications, we select the native client redirect URL and configure it with that one. And then secondly, we will enable the device client type for the device code flow that we are going to use to authenticate against the Grave API. So now that authentication part is configured, we still need to give the enterprise application some permissions. And we are going to go to APA permissions, add permissions, and we're going to add Microsoft Graph permissions. Those will be delegated permissions. And we are going to need application read all permissions. This is because we are adding some um, conditional access policies that are targeted to applications and for that we need um, application read all permissions. Um, secondly, we need policy permissions. So let's just go to policy and what we will find there is policy read all. That's what we're going to need. And we are also require policy read write conditional access. So these are the three permissions we need. Uh, we go to add permissions and now we have them here. We do not need to grant admin consent to this application. We will log in with our normal user and do not grant admin consent. So now that we have the, the enterprise application configured or the app registration, we can go to overview, um, which will show us the client ID that we will need in just a moment. So we can copy that already. Um, we will open a PowerShell and go to our folder where our PowerShell script is located, the deploy policies PS1 and we will just call that and add some parameters. Um, we can just tap through it. So we're going to add the prefix that will be added to the policies and also to the groups that are going to be created. In this case, just CA1, for example, uh, sorry, just CA. We need the client ID that we just copied. Then we need the tenant name that we're going to find um, in the Azure Active Directory start site. So this is the on Microsoft address. And the last thing that is required is the policy folder. So we head back to our policy sets, choose the policy set we want to deploy. Push it in here and press enter. There are other parameters we could provide, but um, you can take a look at the script. Um, they are not required. Now we need to fulfill the device login. So we're going to get a code here. We will take this code and as the message prompts us, we will go to the device login site. Perform the device login with our user. In this case, it's a global administrator. Um, we will be asked to grant these permissions and we do not need to consent on behalf of the organization. It's okay if we just do with this user. So now we have signed in. We go back, we confirm that we have signed in and now the script will prompt us for normal credentials and we're going to provide, I'm going to provide global administrator credentials here 
um, but basically the script will connect um, to Azure AD with the normal Azure AD PowerShell module um, and create and read groups. So that's the permissions that would be required there. Gonna approve. And now the policy or the process is already kicking off, creating our policies. Um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create our policies from the set. It will also create an exclusion group for every policy and it will also create a uh, one group for our emergency access accounts and one group for our on-prem sync account service account from Azure AD Connect. So it will take a while for these policies to be created and when they are created they will be disabled so you can decide on your own um, which policies you want to enable if you want to start with report only mode or however you want to roll this feature out or this policy set out. So let's just wait here for it to finish and then we'll take a quick look at the condition nexus blade in Azure Active Directory. Or we can see it's policy 20 right now, um, four more, so we're deploying 24 policies here. That's it, script is done. So we go to condition access policies, just gonna refresh the site. And now we will see that our policies are deployed. They're all disabled and we would be able to enable them right now. We can see 21, so let's just do another quick refresh. Sometimes the port is a little bit slower. There we go, 24 policies. And if we take a look at one of them, for example, um, let's take a look at the base protection that requires um, MFA when a medium risk is detected for our AAD pre-2 users. So if we go here, we will see it's targeted to a group, um, CAAD P2, which is a dynamic group looking at the <coughs> looking at the licenses. And we will see in the exclude policies that our guests are ex excluded and we have a dedicated exclusion group and our emergency accounts are excluded. We see the Cloud Apps that are selected, our conditions, with the sign-in risk is set and our grant control with require MFA is enabled. So um, assuming a risk will never trigger for our sync service account, um, it will never like it will never trigger this policy. So our sync service account should be fine. It's not excluded here, but in theory it could still hit this policy. So we need to be a little bit careful here. There are other policies, um, for example, in the base protection um, where it says, let me just quick look. For example, require MFA or trusted device or trusted location. Um, here, our synchronization service account is actually excluded. At least the group is excluded. Um, so take a look and decide yourself if my logic um, is okay for you or not, where I have the synchronization account excluded. Um, anyways, that's the policy deployment. I hope it's helpful and feel free to, to reach out to me if you have any other feedback. And please take a look at the wiki and take a look at the post deployment tasks because they are important. Um, so do not forget about the po post deployment task. Thank you very much.